Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know, like subscribe, and share to help support the channel. First article of interest for today. This is the time to officially announce the government of Mustafa Akazemi. Well-informed political sources in Baghdad revealed that the Prime Minister designate Mustafa Akazemi is urging the way forward in order to finish writing his government's program, and it is hoped that it will end next week. The sources that spoke to Iraq Today revealed that Al-Qazemi may announce his government at the end of next week and push it to the House of Representatives on the night of the blessed month of Ramadan to pass it, and that this is delayed because the date of the announcement will not exceed the end of the last week of this month. In a question to Iraq Today about the most prominent files that Al-Qazemi will address in his government program, the sources said, briefly, the Prime Minister designates set a set of priorities, including confronting the coronavirus pandemic and setting quick remedies for the crumbling economy, as well as addressing the file of corruption, as well as regulating the status of foreign forces on Iraqi soil, social problems such as unemployment, lack of services and responding to popular demands, as well as preparing for early parliamentary elections in response to the call of the street in religious reference and other files that the citizen will find in this program. Next article of interest. Centralization and Economic Confrontation Since the beginning of the last quarter of 2019, Iraq has been going through many complicated political and economic conditions and challenges, to which the repercussions of the spread of the coronavirus have been added in most of the world countries, including ours. What matters to us here is the state of the Iraqi economy in the current circumstance and how it will be able to overcome its economic and financial crisis expected during the coming months, since the central banks in the countries of the world aim mainly to achieve economic stability and overcome the challenges of instability in the monetary system and the financial system through its programs and strategies and facing crises and challenges economic shocks in particular and working in accordance with monetary policy tools and means in achieving the required support for national economies. This is what is happening now, as most of the central banks in the countries of the world have drawn up proactive plans to confront the effects of corona in the global economy and have allocated allocations and treatments and the applications of monetary policy and unite the world economies in support of the orientation of central banks and the G20's decision in its last meeting to pump $5 trillion in global market to revitalize the economy. And what is happening now is the efforts of the oil-producing countries to address the low prices and try to return to its prices near $50 a barrel after agreeing to reduce production by 10 million barrels per day. All the international measures taken by the countries of the world were previously used by the Central Bank of Iraq during the economic and security shocks after 2015 and had experience of success in supporting the national economy and achieving economic resilience. According to a press statement of the Central Bank by taking immediate decisions to enhance the liquidity of banks by 1 trillion dinars by reducing the percentage of legal reserves for banks at the Central Bank postponing penalties and fines, activating their investments with the bank and other important decisions to stimulate the economic cycle and granting a fundamental role for the banking sector in supporting the government effort to bypass the current circumstance. Its initiative is added to it to make a donation to support the Ministry of Health in the face of the epidemic and to postpone the monthly installments of borrowers from the SME funding initiative. From my vision as an observer and a follower of the current economic situation and the country is about to form a new government whose primary goal will be to overcome our economic and epidemic crises, I can say that the central bank with its issued decisions has started the corresponding attack in support of the national economy and is bent on a new success experience, because I see that Iraq's problems lie in the economic solution and this solution is in the hands of the central bank of Iraq. Therefore. The central must be granted freedom to implement its economic plans and procedures. Next article of interest. Congress pushes digital dollar in another COVID-19 stimulus bill. Yesterday the U.S. Congress published another COVID-19 bill, the Automatic Boost to Communities Act, ABC Act. 
Previous bills in March from Democrats in Congress and the Senate suggested distributing immediate cash relief using digital dollars, but this wasn't practical timing-wise. Instead, the latest bill proposes that digital dollar wallets should be available by the start of 2021. The bill demands a universal basic income, UBI, of $2,000 per month during the crisis and, after that $1,000 per month for a year, to be financed by the issue of $2 trillion in dollar coins. Real people, not corporations need to be at the center of any legislative relief effort to combat the harms caused by this global pandemic. To many of our workers, low-income people and families across the country were instantly impacted and we need to have an aggressive and inclusive financial assistance program, said Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. There have been problems with distributing stimulus payments as reported yesterday by The Washington Post and CNBC. Hence the new bill proposes multiple payment routes for the UBI payments. Initially, these include direct bank account payments or alternatively a boost prepaid debit card. Then come January, the money could be added to a digital dollar wallet. Like the previous Democrat bills, the digital dollar wallet is branded as a FIDA account, which would be available at local banks and post offices. These accounts would have no fees and also include mobile banking and ATM access at post offices. But this time it goes a step further and says after the COVID-19 UBI payments finish there should be digital dollar cash wallets or e-cash wallets which can receive e-cash and are compatible with FIT accounts. Additionally, it suggests the formation of a digital financial privacy board to ensure digital cash retains the same anonymity as physical cash. There has been some confusion that these bills are somehow related to to the Digital Dollar Foundation. This is a project initiated by the former chair of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFDC, J. Christopher Giancarlo, who believes that the U.S. needs a central bank digital currency, CBDC. We previously interviewed David Drake from Accenture the partner in the Digital Dollar Foundation, and he said that they were not involved or consulted for the two March bills. At the time, Treat said, it is not something that can be done in weeks. We are at the beginning of this journey in terms of what we are calling a digital dollar. Like subscribe and share to help support the channel. Check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter as I post important daily updates on these platforms throughout the day as well. The link to these and other invaluable sites are in the description box below. Knowledge is power. Using that knowledge is powerful. Over and out for now, the Denarian.